Dr. Bescatori, by improving brain function, can using pycnogenol help with conditions like ADHD? Oh, sure. I mean, but pycnogenol does that in a different way than it does in sort of uh, just sort of cognitive decline and, and memory loss and that sort of thing. Oh, okay. Um, how pycnogenol, or, or, or the clinical research that we looked at with mm -hmm. pycnogenol, um, or that I looked at, uh -huh. uh, what you did was with ADHD, mm -hmm. you've got people who are hyperactive, who have attention deficits, uh, you know, just sort of different things. And, and, and you know, the interesting thing about ADHD is that it manifests itself differently in girls and boys. Does um, it? Adults. It, man it manifests itself in, in a variety of different ways. Oh, okay. um, girls tend to be less attentive. Mm -hmm. and boys tend to be more hyperactive. Okay. That's why it gets diagnosed way more in boys, because it's noticeable. <laughs> the inattention can be, oh, she's just daydreaming or whatever, uh -huh. but, but that's, that's a real serious problem. And so the study that they looked at with um, ADHD and pycnogenol is they showed that what it does is, again, you look at, when you're looking at, when you, when you research anything, you have to look at biochemical markers and things. Right. And this mm -hmm. looked at decreasing the stress hormones so that you could mm -hmm. actually see a decrease in the stress hormones were measured, mm -hmm. a measurable decrease in the stress hormones, a significant decrease in the stress hormones by taking pycnogenol. And the stress hormones, that's, that's well, what the connection is? That was what the connection was because mm -hmm. stress hormones can, can cause hyperactivity. Oh, all right. So you saw less hyperactivity in this, in, in, in this study because it decreased the stress hormones. But the stress hormones were the biochemical marker that was also used. All right. So, so it's, it's always nice, and, and that's what I like about pycnogenol and the pycnogenol research, is that they always try to use a biochemical marker mm -hmm. and a, whatever you want to call it, like a quality of life scale, mm -hmm. you know, sort of a, a right. symptomatology markers as well. So you're getting symptomatology and you're getting biochemistry together. So you kind of know what the product is doing. Mm -hmm. And so it's easy for a clinician or it's easy for a, you know, just a lay person to say, oh, okay, that's what it's doing for me and that's why I should take it. And, and that's what's great about pycnogenol is that in, in, most of their, in most of their clinical research, they, they always try to get a biochemical marker and a, just a, uh, a, a lifestyle marker. So it reduces the stress. Well, not necessarily the stress reduction, but reducing the stress hormones which okay. lead to hyperactivity. Okay, that's so okay. that's I wanted that's to follow through on that. Okay. Yeah, it's not stress as mm -hmm. much as it's the stress hormones are a biochemical marker for the hyperactivity. And that can manifest in adults as well as children, right? Yeah, they're actually finding that it that there are a lot of adults with with attention deficit disorder. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not so sure attention deficit disorder may necessarily has to be treated in everyone who has attention deficit disorder. Okay. I'm a big fan in, I think attention deficit disorder, I would love to have attention deficit disorder and think about 25 <laughs> different things at once. I think I would get so many things more, so many more things accomplished okay. in a given day. But I, I really try to encourage, I try to encourage parents, mm. I try to encourage um, adults, learn how to deal with your ADHD. Let it work for you as mm -hmm. opposed to letting it work against you. And, but pycnogenol, I think, is definitely there to help take the, the edge, edge off. off. Yes, we were on the same page on that, taking the edge off. Of Absolutely. That. Very good. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you.